And now to our lab... Ouch! ..for some amazing body experiments. <gasps> Just don't try anything you see here at home. Ooh, spaghetti bolognese, my absolute favourite. It's on. Yes, sir. This is delicious, by the way. It's not for you, it's for our experiment. But it's tasty, and I'm hungry. Look, you can have some later, perhaps, but I want to talk about food now, because every year you eat about 500 kilograms of food, and that's enough to fill two bathtubs to the brim. Why are you keeping food in the bath? Food goes in the fridge. If you keep the food in the bathtub, where do I have a bath? In the fridge? Look, Zond, no one's interested in your kitchen bathroom confusions. Now, you don't just eat food because it tastes good. Your body is actually an amazing energy conversion machine. So it's constantly turning what you eat into energy, even when you're asleep. And you use the energy from this food for all sorts of things, which is why I need this spag bowl, Zond. Now, watch. You use up to 75% of every meal for things like breathing, circulating blood and growing. Are you trying to make a pie chart out of spaghetti bolognese? Why don't you use a pie? Well, I, I had a pie for this very job, but it just vanished from the fridge. I hate it when that happens. Then 10% of what you eat is used up simply to digest what you've just eaten. I think that's a little bit more than 10%, Chris. I'll just adjust it for you. The remaining 15% is used up doing things you choose to do. Whether it's watching Operation Out, walking your dog or playing with your mates. But how does your body turn your food into energy? Well, we're going to show you. In order to release chemical energy from food, your body has to combine it with oxygen from the air. That's why you breathe. Now, we've got pure oxygen here. Now, we also have one digestive biscuit here and then the same weight of pasta. Now, they might be the same weight, but they give your body different types of energy. We're going to release the energy from both the pasta and the biscuit so you can see the different levels of energy you get from each. First up, pasta. And I'm going to soak it in this liquid oxygen. Inside your body, when oxygen and food are combined, a chemical reaction happens naturally. But outside the body, we need to ignite the chemical reaction using fire. Now, we're using special equipment to do this experiment in our lab, so don't even think about trying this at home. It's a terrible way of cooking pasta, especially after you did such a nice job with that spaghetti. Zond, it's not a cookery show. This is about energy. Pasta releases energy in your body slowly and steadily, just like the small, steady flame burning here. But how will the digestive biscuit compare to the pasta? Will it, A, release more energy, or B, less energy. Let's find out. Ready? Whoa! <laughs> now that burns in quite a different way to the pasta. So yes, the massive flame shows that our biscuit does immediately release more energy, but don't be fooled by our action replay. It's for a shorter amount of time. It's why you might immediately perk up after eating something sweet, but then have a slump soon after. You've ruined it! I was really looking forward to that! This is a complete disaster! I think it was a great success. So, while we get energy from all the food we eat, some foods, like pasta, release it slowly while other sweet foods deliver a quick but short-lived energy burst, which isn't much use if you want to get through the day. And so digestive biscuits should only be enjoyed as a treat. Isn't that right, Zant? <laughs>